Hi, thanks for being in a new video. Let me tell you what I like most and least about the Motorola Edge 50 Pro in case you want to buy it. So, as always, let me tell you, don't buy the Motorola Edge 50 Pro without watching this video. Let's consider its launch price, which in Mexico with Telcel has been 10,999 pesos. I can tell you in advance that it seems to me an exaggeratedly competitive price considering the specifications it has. On the screen you saw the reference price in dollars but remember that the prices here are not the same as there. Let's start with what I like the most. Being a Motorola it has a good distribution so you can buy it both in physical stores and online stores. It has a very nice design with very thin bilals. The device is very comfortable, very light, very thin, but it also has the IP68 level of water resistance. Its screen has a resolution higher than Full HD and of course it has all the advantages of being an OLED screen. It actually has a refresh rate of 144Hz, so it's a spectacular display, although going up to 144Hz, it might also affect the battery a little bit, which I'll tell you about a little bit later. The front camera is 50 megapixels with aperture f1.9 and autofocus, that is to say it is a camera that really is going to give us a very good quality, the sensor is of high resolution, has a very bright aperture, and the fact of having autofocus at this price sincerely is something that has surprised me for good, since there are other high-end Android devices which still have fixed focus, so Motorola has done very good work. And uh, this camera is very good for photos, even for group shots. So if you like selfies, you are going to enjoy it a lot. The gesture to open the camera on Motorola has been retained, and I love this. You simply rotate the device twice, and you're done. And this works whether the device is locked, or whether it's unlocked, or whether you're in any other app, so it gives you a lot of agility to open the camera quickly. The camera module has good hardware. Ultra-wide main and telephoto. A configuration that is not very common in the price range. But it even has a sensor to improve autofocus. Night photography is quite good from the automatic mode and if you activate the night vision mode it is much better still. It also takes good macro shots especially considering that the ultra wide camera also has autofocus and is good for this type of captures. The portrait shots I liked as well. So yes it does tend to do good foreground detection although like any smartphone it might have some areas of inaccuracy but that's normal. Overall I tell you the portrait photos I really liked. It also allows you to record in in-in-camera mode. This is another highlight as there are other manufacturers that give less priority to the add-on cameras and only allow the main camera to have the highest quality video recording. And it also has a horizon lock feature that will help you have supreme stabilization. Believe me, even if you are running around like desperate, the video looks very stable. The front camera is also going to offer you a very good quality recording. This is as a result of having a very modern sensor, good aperture and autofocus. So for recording blogs, for example, it would also be a good tool. In fact, it integrates dual recording in Full HD so you can record both the rear camera and the front camera. And again, as I say, it can be a good tool when creating content like blogs and the like. Pilote. It also integrates slow motion and fast motion on both the front and the back. And it has a mode for scanning documents where not only will it be a cropped photo, but you can also apply some different color filters and apply cleanup on your document, something that not all devices offer. Motorola's software has improved and now allows you to open applications in floating window up to 5. And in fact, interestingly, it even supports Instagram, YouTube and other apps that usually on other devices are not available within this mode. It has a fingerprint reader that responds fast and now already integrates in secure folder. For a long time, Motorola had a very simple software, but lately they have been improving it, incorporating new features. One of them is the secure folder, so they no longer rely only on the Google Files secure folder. It has a charger included in the box of 125 watts, which in my test charged from 0 to 100 in 23 minutes. In addition, it supports 50 watt wireless charging and also reversible wireless charging. In other words, it has features of a premium range device and the ultra fast charging definitely helps tremendously. It can project its screen in an advanced way through Ready4, so you can use apps in Windows as if it were a computer interface. With this, you gain a lot of productivity and versatility when using your device on a large screen. Also, consider that you can connect a mouse and keyboard and you definitely gain many more tools. In addition, this does have a physical proximity sensor, which today it is worth noting because many manufacturers opt for virtual proximity sensors, even in devices in this price range. It integrates 12GB of RAM and 512GB of storage. Definitely that with this you have a very good experience, it will not fill up quickly and it will not get slow when you have many applications open. In addition it supports recording your gameplays in full HD at 60 frames per second. I say this because there are even premium devices that still record your screen in a lower resolution than HD at 30 frames per second but this device has good capabilities.
However, now let me tell you what I didn't like. It has no headphone jack. This is something we are getting used to in this kind of devices in the price range, but we still miss this feature. The microphones have a noise cancellation set that cannot be turned off. So there are some scenarios where this noise cancellation plays havoc. For example, if you are recording some concert, there are times when it cancels the music and you only start hearing the voice. I really didn't like this. Hopefully they can fix it with an update. Capturing photos with a front camera is not perceived as agile. Possibly this is because it integrates a high resolution sensor and you have to give it a little time to process the image. In general, the photographic system needs a little more optimization. For example, in backlighting, the shadow area is not so well exposed. It gives the impression of being an image that is even mounted on top of another. The frontal portrait photography does not manage to keep the objects in focus, only the faces. The capture in general feels a bit slow, it takes almost half a second before the picture is taken. The burst is also a bit slow. The telephoto camera does not give me a good performance in motion pictures. The ultra-wide camera has a lot of chromatic aberration. In backlight, it does not behave as it should. And when recording video, there are some strange cuts. Even the colors with the ultra-wide camera look a bit paler. The backlit recording also needs improvement and at night with the ultra-wide camera it is definitely not recommended to use it. Definitely that the result comes out bad. So as you see there are several parameters where the camera should improve and I guess this they can do with an upgrade because actually the hardware is pretty good. The Snapdragon 7 GN3 processor can get overheated and this heating takes its toll on several things. For example video stabilization gets worse when the device is very hot. The transition between cameras when recording video also gets worse when the device is hot. So it's kind of weird. It also doesn't have always on display. This is quite curious because a P or LED display is integrated but if you like this feature so that the device keeps showing you the time or other information even if you have your device locked it's not available here. The one handed mode only fits in portrait format. Personally I prefer devices that bring not only vertical but also horizontal adjustment to reach all areas of the screen. The battery is a small 4,500 mAh. In my test, for example, gave an hour less than what on average give other devices having a very intense use. So it's definitely a battery that's small, although you know you can recharge it really fast, but you probably have to carry the charger around. And in my test for exporting videos, it also behaved a bit slow. Possibly this processor still needs some additional time to further optimize and improve performance. If you already bought it, let me know how much it cost you and what you liked about it. For now we have reached the end of this video. If you liked it, you know you can let me know and I'll see you next time.